Hi, this is Madeline Westerman, and they're asking authors to read their books out loud to children while we're kind of in the stay-at-home mode. So this is my book, The Island of the Invisible Being. And I wrote this when I lived in the Marshall Islands, and the illustrator is Erin Johnson, who was the art teacher uh, in the Marshall Islands, and she drew these beautiful pictures to accompany the book. So you might be thinking this is a lot to stay at home and a lot of things that are going on that we can't control. This is about one young girl who solved problems using the resources in between her two ears, her brain. And it's a legend from the Marshall Islands. It was told to one of my students who lived in the Marshall Islands by his grandmother and it was passed down orally. So this is the Island of the Invisible being a legend from the Marshall Islands. And kind of see if you can think of any other stories that might sound like this. Long ago on an island nestled in the arms of the ocean, there lived a family. The father and mother were blessed with three children, Nell, Mech, and Iman. One daughter, Iman, the native word for pleasing, was homely and thin. She worked very hard, rising hours before anyone else to grind fresh coconut for her family to eat. She was a skillful weaver, making beautiful baskets from the palm leaves. None of the other children worked so hard to please her family as Iman. You might feel that way. Sometimes you work and try so very hard, but it doesn't quite seem that you get it right. That's kind of how the main character felt. Yet despite her dedication, her father and mother were always displeased with her. One morning, Iman awoke early as usual to gather breadfruit and fresh coconut for her family's breakfast. She was surprised to find her parents awake and busy wrapping fish and leaves. Several of the woven sleeping mats were rolled together and placed in their small outrigger canoe. So there's the mom and dad getting ready to go for a special event. And they used to weave things, they still do, out of palm fronds. So a sleeping mat, I made this hat when I was in the Marshall Islands by just weaving together the palm branches. And it did very well to keep the sun off my face. So they're getting ready to go for a family outing. Now an outrigger canoe is much like your family car. So they would take that to go from island to island to find the resources they needed. Come with us, Iman. We have prepared a wonderful picnic, called her mother. We have far to travel. Be quick and make yourself ready before the sun is directly overhead. Iman climbed aboard. Her father gently pushed the canoe into the water. Where are we going, father? asked Iman as her father consult consulted his stick chart. So see up there, the father's using a stick chart. These were made by the men and the shells mark where islands were and it told them where the good resources were on the different islands that they needed. We will travel west until the sun reaches high in the sky. We will make a picnic on the island of the invisible being and leave shells and fish to appease his anger at our people for entering his atoll. Iman knew of this invisible being. The village storyteller had filled her head with images of his grotesque appearance, power, and wrath. Doesn't look at all like Jason Moana in Aquaman. Kind of scary looking. She was deeply afraid, but she hid her fear. She knew he must she must help her parents make good offerings or the invisible being would come to their island and destroy them all. So she's putting her brave face on and going to help her family. The outrigger followed along the blue reef. The ocean wrapped around the lagoon like the mantle of a tiger shell. So this is a tiger shell that I found when I was in the Marshall Islands. There's a little critter that lives in this cavity and it wraps its mantle around the outside of the shell as it travels around and looks for food. Iman could make out the shape of a large island on the horizon. Her father paddled the canoe easily onto the sand. A chill shook her frame as she beheld the unfamiliar landscape. Sparting a large cavernous opening in the jungle, she turned her face back toward the small boat. 
So a cave like this would be very rare in the atolls of the Marshall Islands. There's not much volcanic island activity there because they're created on the edges of an extinct volcano. So this was a very one of a kind island. Gather wood for the fire. We must cook our fish to please the invisible being called her mother. Our family must appease his anger at us for eating his coconuts, drinking their sweet milk, and harvesting the breadfruit from his land. Iman was terrified, but she did as she was told. So the invisible being has a little anger management issue he's working on, but she's gonna face her fears and she's still gonna try to help her family. As soon as Iman disappeared around the crescent outline of the shore, her parents quickly pushed the long hole into the lagoon and departed. Iman was left behind. Who does that? Why are they leaving her behind? It's not very nice. Iman walked quietly, carrying the sticks in the folds of her dress. She sang softly to herself as she worked songs she had learned as a child from the storyteller. Suddenly, she stopped singing, fearing that she was being watched. She turned quickly, but saw no one. Still, she felt a pair of eyes watching her every move. With all her skirt could hold, she made her way back to the beach. Her arms felt limp dropping her bundle of wood as she beheld the empty cove. Far on the horizon, Iman could see the faint shape of the canoe growing smaller with each passing second. Instantly, she realized the betrayal of her parents. Falling to the sand, she wept while the sun rose high in the sky. I mean, who does that? Just leaves her behind like that. No, no goodbye, nothing just gone. The invisible being watched silently from the entrance of his cave. His heart felt the pain of her cries. Still, he watched and hid himself to see what she was going to do. Many a maiden had been left stranded on his island. All the others had perished quickly, not so much as lifting a finger to better their plight for they were spoiled, rotten, and vain. Their families had left them hoping that they would find their beauty irresistible and take them as his wife. No, he would wait, for in time, it would surely reveal the true nature of his new guest. So you see the tears coming out of her eyes? She's kind of calling the wambulance, one 800 oh wham because she's upset and she's letting her feelings out, which we need to do. But watch what happens next. Slowly, Iman lifted her tear-stained face. She dried her tears on the hem of her dress. Crying is not going to help me. I need food and shelter. Brushing the sand from her dress, she moved easily across the land to a palm tree laden with ripe fruit. Now, look at how high that is up there. That is a long ways to climb. I'm telling you, the kids in the Marshall Islands could shimmy up that tree lickety split. Not me. Or they could throw a rock and knock those coconuts down. Let's see what she chooses to do. The invisible, the invisible being marveled as the girl shimmied up the coconut palm, retrieving a ripe green coconut. His eyes widened with delight as she husked the coconut easily on a sharp rock. Without a sound, he swept close to her side, hiding among the roots of the pandanas, watching her work. I finally found the one worthy of my love. Can you see him there up in the palm tree branches? He's watching her and he likes what he sees. Iman sensed a presence and stopped her weaving. Her eyes swept about serenely. The calm of this peaceful place filled her like a flowing tide. She gently picked up a coconut crab crouched in the shadows nearby and shared the rich coconut meat. So she has very little to eat, but she's going to share what she has with a coconut crab. 
Now, coconut crab are delicious to eat, but she's not gonna eat it. She's sharing with the coconut crab. Her smile was more beautiful than any the invisible being had ever seen. Coconut crab meat is a favorite food of the island people, yet she neither harmed nor entrapped it. He could stand it no longer. Forgetting his fearsome appearance, the invisible being raised himself up from the jungle. Uh, he doesn't look very good, not like Jason Moana in the Aquaman movie. He's kind of misty and scary looking. Iman looked up quietly. Viewing his horrid, shapeless features, she neither winced nor turned away. Smiling, she held out her very last piece of coconut for him. She saw his goodness and she wasn't frightened by his misty outline. So see, she's looking inside of him and he's looking inside of her, not on the outward appearance. He tenderly plucked the offering from her hand. Feelings of joy exploded in his heart. Instantly, the invisible being took her to the mouth of his cave and inside Iman beheld a wealth beyond any she had ever experienced. The sweetest fruits, the richest coconut milk, and woven mats as soft as the air itself. He was rich with resources. With the happiness and good care provided by the invisible being, Iman began to change. Her hair became thick, shining blue-black in the sun. Her gaunt features filled out, glowing with health and good fortune. Through her gentle care, the invisible being's anger subsided. He no longer stormed throughout the atoll, seeking offerings that never brought him any satisfaction. So they're kind of bringing out the best in each other. Like when you're at stay at home and you got your brothers and sisters um, home with you and you might feel like you might want to be your worst version of yourself. But think about it. How could you use kindness to bring the best out of your brothers and sisters and of your situation? Well, that's what they did. With Iman, the invisible beings at the invisible being side, the violent winds of the typhoon season ceased, creating the doldrums. He carved his tribal signature on a sturdy love stick and slipped it into Iman's hand. This sealed their lifelong bond. And look how happy they both are, bringing out goodness with kindness. It wasn't more than a year later that a typhoon-swept boater came upon the island of the invisible being, hoping to weather the storm in its calm lagoon. News of his rescue by an enchanted woman reached the ears of Iman's father and mother. They were astounded to learn their daughter had not perished, but lived in the comfort of the island of the invisible being. Who would have thunk? Ever since the day Iman had been abandoned, her family had fared poorly. So look how thin the mom and the dad are. Now that shows they are not providing for each other very well or doing good self-care. So they're getting thinner and thinner, but not Iman. None of the lazy sisters would rise before dawn to gather any food. None of them knew even how to prepare the sweet coconut meat or fish. Their bed mats had become brittle and splintered. Let's go to our sister and claim what is rightfully ours, claimed Mech the eldest. I'm starving, screamed Nell the middle child. She must cook fish for us so we can feast. By our law, she must share her good fortune with us. The greedy foursome climbed into the outrigger and paddled to the island belonging to the invisible being. See how this goes. From his cave, the invisible being saw them long before the smooth wooden hull touched his shore. His anger boiled like molten lava, for he knew well the intent of their visit. ro uh -oh. The boat bobbed tiny before his storming rage. With a sweep of his arm, he flung the ground coconut into the sea all around the outrigger. The waters began to churn and boil about in the boat. Huge waves crested and broke over the bow. Ooh, he's not very happy with them. 
I know why you have come, he shouted, his voice sounding like a thousand claps of thunder. You shall not touch a single morsel of my food, nor share even one piece of my land. For you have come out of greed, not love. Your fate was sealed by the coldness of your hearts. Not long ago, your family left my beloved on the shores of my island to die. You cared not for her well-being or safety. Only when your bellies grew thin and your mats brittle did you return to steal my wife. See, he sees the inside and their actions. This will cost you dearly. The incredible burden of your selfishness will make it impossible for you to stand on dry land. You and all your generations to come will be banished to the sea forever. You will be known as the cold-blooded creatures that you are. You shall become the creatures of the sea and feel the chill of the murky deep for the pain which you have inflicted on my bride. Look, they're starting to change. Their hands and legs are starting to look more like sea creatures. With that, the canoe was swallowed by the sea. The daughters struggled to swim to the shore. As they moved, their feet and legs began to change. Their hands turned into claws, for now their pinching words would match their appendages. The mother and father's legs fused into one, turning to flippers and fins. The fishy life of gobbling without satisfaction would be theirs for all eternity. Noticing Iman's startled expression, the invisible being embraced her gently. It is tragic for greed and anger to bring about this cruel, but just, fate, he whispered as gently as a breeze. See, he's comforting her. He doesn't want her to worry. The invisible being realized that though they may be separated by the vast lagoons and oceans, his people must forever come together for their common good. From now on, all island people work together to share their food and resources for the benefit of all. I will no longer make demands of sacrifice. The lands and resources will belong to the island dwellers as their greatest possession. All island people will work mightily to preserve its beauty and protect its resources. So this is a great story to think about as we're at stay-at-home mode and facing these kind of challenging times that how can we come together as families to support each other and help each other learn and to be our best selves while we're at home and bring out the goodness inside of each other. So if you have some time, and I know you might have some extra time um, with the stay at home and the online education, we want to extend the learning. So your family might take a table or maybe a cookie tray and create a little island for your family, your own little sanctuary, and think of the resources that you have in your family, in your home, in your house, your yard, your neighborhood, and think of what beautiful things you can make from them. Maybe you could weave some things together to make placemats for your table. Maybe you could design some clothes that would be comfortable. Maybe you could think of a way to practice kindness and show each other kindness in your family. So think of Iman, how she used her challenges to overcome them by being resilient and tenacious. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this story and I hope you all do very well as we weather through this stay-at-home time.